Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texarkana down to the coast and Dallas down to Houston and everything in between, we are ETX Ross. <laughs> hey, Nathan Honeycutt here. We are down at the Boss Light downtown Nacogdoches at 123 Main Street. I'm sitting here with Tim Bryant. Hello. Hello, Nathan. So you've been known by a few different names. Uh, mm -hmm. Tim. Timothy. Othi. 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 Uh, you, had a, you actually had an album called Two Take Tim. I've had a few albums called Two Take Tim. So, and I guess the reason is, is uh, you, you, you get it right. I was, I was playing down quickly. in New Orleans. Yeah, I was playing down in New Orleans. I got that nickname playing in New Orleans uh, in, in the studio. Okay. So, we're at the boss light here. What we'll, I want to ask you a few questions, and we'll start off with where we are now, and mm -hmm. we'll backtrack a little bit. Okay. So, right now, we're sitting in the boss light. Here, I'm looking around, and I see... Uh, books written by authors from the East Texas area. Some of them have had movies, uh, nation nationwide movies. Uh, there are T-shirts over here. Some, some of the most interesting art you have ever seen and will ever see. Yep. Right here. Um, Wally Knight. Wally Knight. He's uh, he's a staple at the Pine Knot uh, every month over there at uh, Millard's Crossing. Right. Um, and then I see that's a Moses Foster. Moses. I, we got a Moses I, Foster. I knew, right? I knew it when I saw it. Yep. Yep. And yep. The, the one in the middle. Who's I don't know who that is. It's, some, it's an East Texas artist, but I don't know his name. Okay. So I'm looking around and I see that. And then oh, obviously you have the old time, uh, the Wild Rose, old, Wild Rose old time yep. photos. Yes, sir. Like uh, you'd go to Las Vegas or Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And that's right. You get those old timey photos where that's you can right. dress up like a... Confederate or Union soldier or, or an outlaw or an outlaw that right, kind of thing. Right. Um, and so we're here. And, and there's really an eclectic uh, mix of things you could come in here and buy. And one of uh, one aspect of it is the music. You have local music. Uh, you have uh, Grady Trushlet and right. yourself and, and right. several other uh, artists who have different bands they work with. Right. And uh, so, how did this? How did the boss light? come about the boss like came about out of the runaway mule which was my shirt store down here and we wanted to expand into books we had a few books but i wanted i wanted to make a i wanted a bookstore so the boss light is the runaway mule with a bunch of books added to it and the name changed okay. to the boss light. right so <laughs> the interesting thing is is the collection of books you have mm -hmm. this is not the typical bookstore maybe not i don't know it's not uh, okay well you have records it's a record store also right. and we have vinyl vinyl yes like real records yes reissues of yes. old classics and, yes and some new it's new stuff it's not the old scratchy right. vinyl no no right it's, it's new uh, collectible vinyl right yes and what what i find interesting is you have written some of the books on these shelves. I think four, I four books. Six books. Six books. Okay. Yes. What was the first one? Dutch Courage. Okay. Dutch Courage came I, out in 2010. I read that one. Yes. What's the next one? Uh, Southern Select. Southern was Select was the sequel to Dutch Courage. And the and the and then the then the next one was Spirit Trap, which was the third book in the Dutch Courage series. Right. So then it became a trilogy, and then the fourth one. And now it's a quadrilogy because there are four. Uh, um, Old Mother Courage. Okay. Couldn't think of the name of it. Right. That's my newest one. It just came out in August. Okay, so if you guys like to read, uh, what, and I hope you do, that is... It's a detective series. Yes, I, I, it's also very... It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. haunting yeah in a way yeah uh, but it but it seems to, it seems it seems to have a positive twist to it like, oh yeah like there's a, oh there has to be yeah there's definitely a positive uh but the, the placement of that is here in texas yeah fort worth yeah fort worth yeah and uh so th there are some things in there that would you'd find uh maybe familiar like mm -hmm. when i was reading the first one i, I thought it's, it's almost like I could picture where this was. Right. You know? I did a lot of research. I mean, it's based in 1950s Fort Worth, so it's not modern day. Right. It's 1950s. I did a lot of research okay. on it, so it's, it's authentic yes. as far as the uh, place. My mother lived in uh, Dallas in the 50s. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, I wasn't there, but... <laughs> uh, 
That's interesting. Uh, and then so you have your music, and then you have uh, yeah. your you have albums that you've uh, done in the past, and and then you have uh, some that you've you've kind of come full circle with. Right. I'm a, I'm a musician before I was anything. I mean, I was kind of born a musician. I became a writer later. So music actually is my first love, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. Rise and Run was... Rise and Run was my first band. We started in 1986. Here in Nacogdoches. In, here in Nacogdoches. There were only two bands in Nacogdoches at that time. It was Rise and Run and a band called Biff Bobney and the Biffettes. Okay. And that was it. And, uh, and, and here in town, during that time, mm -hmm. there were some rather uh, notable artists who came through, and they played at Flashback and a few different places. Crossroads. So, there was Crossroads. no Flashback. Okay. Yeah. Was it? But Crossroads, it was. It was Crossroads then. Okay. Bill, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, like Stevie Ray Vaughan came and played Stevie there. Stevie Ray Vaughan played there, yeah. yeah. I, never heard, I never actually went in to see him. I was a little bit underage, but I heard him. Hmm. From out, you could hear him halfway across the Stephen F. Austin campus. You could seriously. <laughs> yeah. When they were warm, I'd listen to them warming up, and you could hear them. Wow. Yeah, like a quarter of a mile away. Amazing. They'd open the doors and let it rip. So, uh, as far as music goes, what, yep. which are uh, which of these albums over here? Which artists would you say it would be worth it for someone to uh, walk in down in here? Well, for, let me say this. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, it would be worth it for anyone to come down, even make a special trip down here. Uh, we're right on the square, right on the corner of the square in Nacogdoches, downtown on Main Street, Brick Streets, um, just a few buildings away, uh, Dolly's Diner. You can come down here and have a nice bite to eat or go down to the, the Liberty Bell. Right, right. Um, they have live music there. They have a drink named after my runaway mule. Too. The runaway mule. And yeah. that's an interesting story. It's a great drink. Oh, the runaway mule story? Yeah. 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 So, um, Groucho Marx. Marx Brothers, the, yeah, the Marx here, Brothers, 1912, I think it was. They were down here, and they yep. were having a comedy routine. No, they weren't a comedy routine. That was the whole deal. They didn't do comedy. They were a vaudeville act. They they did like Shakespearean stuff. And oh, it, really? It wasn't much much comedy to it. Okay, that's the whole thing. Do you want to hear that story? I mean, you got time for well, that? Well, story? the runaway mule part. Uh, that's well, they, they were the in there. They, they were yeah. They were in there doing some not so funny, not so entertaining entertainment. And a mule got loose out in the street, and somebody came running in hollering, "Run away, mule! Run away, mule!" Like, as if to as say, someone's, "Hey, there's somebody!" Yeah, there's something going, going out, off in your truck. Well, as, this, this as if to say, there's something more exciting out here in the street than there is out in here in your in your uh, right opera house. So everybody started getting up and running out to see what was going on with this runaway mule. I mean, they were getting up and walking out. Yeah. And Groucho, who wasn't Groucho at that time, he hadn't become Groucho. Oh, he, he was a uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, I'm blanking on his name now. Sorry, but anyway, uh, he, he like, you know, off the top of his head, started started doing this comedy stuff just to get the people to turn around and pay attention to him instead of the runaway mule. He right. was competing with the mule right. outside. Talk about so he started saying, "Nacogdoches is full of roaches. Nacogdoches is full." I mean, he was saying it. I think. Oh right. And the people started laughing for some reason. They thought that was it, funny. It, it, it rhymes. It rhymes. Shangri I've heard of Shangri-La Doches. Shangri-La Doches. Uh, no, he didn't do that. Naka Nowhere. He didn't, he didn't do that, though. Uh, he didn't come up with that one. Yeah. Uh, well, right across the on the other side of the square here, the Merc old Mercantile. Right, Mercantile, yeah. Uh, the old now, string shop. Now, the old string shop. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonnie of Bonnie and Clyde is, is said used to work that's, there. That's the legend. <coughs> it, it was a chili parlor back in the 1930s, supposedly. <laughs> I remember you had a letter on your wall. I don't mm -hmm. know, it's a copy of uh, uh, Bonnie uh, Clyde writing to Clyde wrote a letter to, to Henry Ford. Henry Ford, co it, complimenting him, congratulating him, for the, him. Uh, yeah, for the great V8 Ford that he made. Because he said, I, I, he, said I, I, he said I steal them at every chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, and I mean, it's true. That's an actual authentic. That, that is an, an interesting compliment. Like, your, your cars are so good. I only, steal, steal, I only steal your cars. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting also is most of the cops around here, the police officers, they drive drive forward. That's true. And I that guess, is true. I guess because uh, they caught on to him. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. So he, maybe he could, he could outrun the cops so back in those Clyde days in a V8 Ford. Maybe the prime cause for Ford landing the contract it, with probably, all of these. That probably, uh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're right. Probably so. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting. One. Yeah, I never yeah. thought of it that way. Yeah, so they authenticated that letter. You know, that's something interesting. They authenticated it, but what they found out 
in authenticating it, they found out that it was actually written by Bonnie. Even though it oh, says really? Clyde, she obviously was dictating. They were probably driving in a V8 Ford, cruising across, you know, some badlands, and she was writing it out. It for makes him. you wonder if she was more of the that, brains of the operation than, <laughs> well, than he was. Well, or she was a secretary. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, usually, the secretary is the brains, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, probably. But, yeah, um, she probably was. Yeah. Yeah. So about your your album, uh, you were in a band called Rise, Rise and Run. Yeah, right. Right. And you had some uh, original members who uh, are no longer there, but you, you, you had... Uh, the two main members that have been around the longest are me and Jimmy Mascara. Okay, and so 30 years later, right? it turns around, you do another full album. Yeah, I decided 30 years after we did the first one, I decided it was time to bring back the band and do something current. Okay, and, and then with that, uh, you, ha you have an interesting... Uh, I mean, the whole project is interesting how it came together. Yeah, it's a hell of a story. So where did you record this? Uh, well, pieces of it record, were recorded in different places. The bulk of it was recorded here in Nacogdoches, me and Jimmy, uh, uh, at, 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 at Jim Taylor's. Jim's, okay, his studio. Studio. Yeah, he, has a, he has a fabulous. He has a first-rate, top-shelf yeah. studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, and then parts of it were recorded in, in uh, New York. And who was who was the principal? John Lesau, Lesueur. I'm sorry, John Lesueur. And uh, what? Uh, he, he, is, he has an interest. In yeah, the past he there. he actually is the guy who recorded and produced Leonard Cohen's original recording, Hallelujah. That is, that is what he goes down in that's right. history for that's, right there. That's a mind blowing. So for us to work with him was amazing, and he was a great guy. He was fun. You say he was. was nice. I mean, is he, oh, still, he still is. Oh, oh okay, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, during the oh, recording, oh, right? right. It, it was a very fun. He was great. He, he loved what we were doing, and, and he, he uh, great communication, great product. I yeah. mean, he 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 was good. And the name of the album. And then part of it was recorded in Nashville too. We oh, have really? brother Paul Brown playing organ, who's one of the greatest rock and roll organists around. I mean, the dude can seriously play. Yeah. And then we've got. That's part of it was recorded in Ireland. Uh, I, my good friend Steve Wickham plays fiddle. He, he's the fiddle player with the Water Boys. Paul Brown plays organ with the Water Boys. So, so we have uh, two of them. So when they did this, so they would just record, send the record. WAV file through email or Dropbox. That's right. They would go into a studio with with basically with the tracks that we were cutting here okay. in Nacogdoches and add their parts and send them back to them. Right. So would they send a, a raw track and then you would? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, and yeah. So where did where was the final mix? completed here in Nacogdoches at Jim Taylor studio yeah at Jim Taylor studio and, and, and we also at that point I should add we added Grady Trusillet and Heath Rogers okay. here in Nacogdoches two class acts right there yeah, absolutely their stuff was in great fact, I, I, I they did a song great. I have a song on uh, if, if someone wants to look at it YouTube called love you still yeah honeycut slim yep. Grady is the guitarist on that Grady and he was good. recording it I wanted to do the guitar part and uh, he was doing such a good job laying down the drum tracks and he was he was into it on the guitar he was you know messing around with it and uh i could tell he was having so much fun i was like yeah you do it yeah grady and, and it was it was uh, that's that he, the guitar part was just incredible he has a great feel i mean he does he has this feel that you just yeah. can't well just on fake the, it you know the whole production process uh and Heath is the same way. Yeah. They were both, they're classy guys. They yeah. just, it's tasteful what they do. Sure. They, they listen to what I've got and they know exactly what to put in it. It's almost telepathic sometimes. Yeah. It's like Heath was doing these piano parts that were just amazing. So uh, if you hear the piano on the whole album, is Heath? Most of the piano is me. Oh, okay. Funny enough, I'm the piano player. And there's, there's not a lot of piano in Rise and Run. It's more of a rock band and it's, Always been mo more aligned with guitar based drums, but there's some piano well, you, on it, of course. You, you and you I had did a that. previous album uh, called Upright Piano. Right. And uh, well, I do some stuff with just me and piano. Right. That, that's my. So, Upright Piano, it makes me think of an upright bass, which it's, it, you know, uh, I guess an upright piano is opposite. It's like the other kind, other than the, the flat out, uh, like. Well, it's like the ba old church band. Yeah, you see the, with, the, with the back on it, with the yeah. tall. Back right, on, right. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that one, I think I was in. I recorded a track on that. You did. You did. You you recorded a guitar track and background vocals on on upright I did piano. The, I get a. I did the guitar piano. track, 
I don't you, even you, know you had this little lick. It was just this little acoustic guitar lick, man. But it came, it comes in right at the end, and it's really cool. And it brings in your background vocals. I wasn't thinking about that, but yeah, I haven't you're on that. that in like, oh, 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 I haven't like either. That. I haven't either, man. That that, yeah. You, you did great though. That was another one of those Thanks. things where you bring in something and it's like, like a perfect fit. Yeah, yeah. And so we actually, that, we have. that reminds me, we performed together. We have. We've done uh, at the Runaway Mule. We've done Perpetual Motion a few places. Okay, Perpetual Motion. There's I have a Honeycut Slim version of that on YouTube at the Runaway Mule. You're playing uh, piano and doing background vocals on that on the I forgot about Perpetual that. Motion. I forgot about that. Yeah, it, it's the longest song I've ever recorded. <laughs> but you, that song goes. When, when it comes to but you you te- like you tend bird. to have longer songs. That you you ride out the whole emotion and you you keep going until you're. You feel like I like to get into done. the music and, and let, let give it time for the music to kind of start doing things. Well, well I know? think of like you know, whenever I was younger, I would have uh, some uh, a piece of gum. Yeah, I would chew that thing and blow some bubbles, and it like I just wanted to blow the bubble, you know. Right, right. And, right. Uh, so I would chew it up fast, and uh, I, I would imagine when you were younger, you chewed the gum slow. Yeah, that's all about sav- savoring the flavor. Right, right. And, uh, and you save that bubble to the very end. Right. Man. You save <laughs> that awesome. bubble. One big bubble at the end. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm thinking like radio ready tunes, you know, like uh, three, the three minute mark. But. I don't have a lot of those. The new Rise and Run album is, is very typical for Rise and Run. Most of our songs are five minutes plus. Yeah. I mean, if we, can, if we can get it into five minutes, we're doing good. Sure. That, that's like single edits. So... Um, so, um, um, what do you have coming up? I know you're always writing. You have a new book deal. Well, yeah, I've got a book. Right now I'm writing fiction. I just put out, like I said, Old Mother Courage. Right. And I'm writing. I just signed a deal with Kensington Books in New York City. And I'm writing a Western that's coming out November 2017. Nice. So I've got to get that finished up in the next two or three months. And then I've, I've actually got a two-book deal, so I'm writing that and then the sequel right after that. Okay. So that's that's what's Did they the... tell you exactly what they wanted or just said, they said, hey, we want a Western? They want to know a, a lot more than that. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of, you kind of got to give them a synopsis okay. of where it's going. It's yeah. an interesting thing. This is a 17-page contract, and it spells out a lot of... Nice. A lot of stuff, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I guess in some ways that's helpful uh, where, you know, mm, yeah. you, you can keep it between the lane, the, the lines. And well, I, I tend, I, but the thing is, I tend to write by the seat of my pants. I, I don't use like, a, a, you know, I don't chart it out and figure it out in advance. I, I, I do, kinda, in, do you in some so, ways so kind of let it just, just I sp- discover spill out? And then when you do, you think, well, that just doesn't make any sense, but maybe it'll, it will turn around. Sometimes that happens. Mostly I, I, I discover it, it's almost like the reader. I'm discovering what's going on with these characters as, as a reader would, you know, right. what's going to happen next. And I'm not sure, I know the general direction, and I think subconsciously my brain just knows how to write. Yeah. So there's an arc going on in the back of my mind that I'm not really conscious of. But I don't sit there and, you know, plot it all out. I don't use plot lines and stuff like yeah. that. And, and people like Kensington want to know, Tell us the plot, right? So I, you, you kind of just have to make up something, you know. Right. Yeah. That's well, he's going to do this, that, and the other, and then when you write it, he does the other, this, and then that, you know. Sometimes, right. so. Yeah. I guess. I, I I mean, mean, I, neither. So really, you, you you write into your stories a lot of suspense, or a lot of guesswork. Uh, where, when you're reading it, you, you, well, they're mysteries. You, I mean, yeah, primarily you're, you're they are mysteries. To figure out what's going on and. Um, I, I remember, but reading, this is a western, so it's really not a mystery as much. I well, mean, westerns have it, their own kind I, of sense of true, but really, even in uh, in those, there's a there's a little. Well, there's a suspense, yeah, yeah definitely a suspense, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've never read a book where you know you have. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, Dutch Courage is a really cool book for you to start on if you're going to listen to or to uh, hey, actually listen to in that sense. Have you thought about doing an audio book? The first three Dutch Courage books are available on audio book now. Yeah, the fourth one will be soon. Um, Or is it uh, Art 
Flavel is his name. Okay. And he's good. He's very good. Wow. I mean, he, he, he gets the character. So if someone wanted to, to buy into uh, your books and start, you mm -hmm. know, really checking it out and seeing what a creative mind in the oldest town in Texas right. is like. Right. If they what, wanted to... What would they do? do? That, where would they what go? What would they do if they wanted to do that? Well, I think I know the answer. They would, they would come they down to 123 the, Main Street. Well, that's right. They'd come to 123 East Main, the ball site, downtown Nacogdoches. If they couldn't do that, though, they can go to Amazon. Uh -huh. And on Amazon, you can get the, the um, audio book. So would they type in Tim or Timothy Bryant? Tim Bryant. Tim Bryant. Yeah. And Dutch Courage. Now, now you would think that that's a one word, but it's a totally different uh, spelling. Yeah, C U R R I D G E. C U R R I D G E. That's his last name. Dutch Courage. Yeah. And his name is Alvis Courage. Right. But they call him Dutch. Dutch. For reasons that become apparent. Right. Um, so you, I see you also have things. Oh, you also sell ETX music shirts, I ETX do. rock shirts, Absolutely. ETX VIP shirts. Yep. They we, are we, actually down here. We support ETX. And that's awesome. One hundred percent. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, well, you've definitely been a part of the music scene since uh, well for since over before ETX, man. Oh, way before. I'm, I'm pre ETX. Well, actually, no. You, <laughs> you, you, you're more indigenous to to ETX than ETX because ETX is East Texas. So if you think about it, you, you were you you were setting the tone well way before uh, we came around and started rocking the block. So I like the sound of that. Yeah. And look, we're sitting here talking to each other. Uh, That's right. And, and I think it's interesting that there are things to come here. Mm. Yes, uh, there's much to come here. Oh, yeah. So We're just beginning. Right. Um, so in that vein there, do you have a Rise and Run album release party or any kind of event coming up in the next few months or anything or planned? I hear we've got some kind of a contest with ETX. Beyond that... Oh right, I, I'm not sure. Okay, it's all rumors. Do you think? Uh, do you think the pine knot would be a possibility? It could be a possibility. We've looked into that. It, it's hard to get the band together. It's kind of a magical thing. Okay. And, and, where, and where does everyone live? Well, with with this edition of the band, we got people thrown out from New York to Ireland to to uh, okay, Houston, Houston to Nacogdoches. The, the, the two core members. The two core members. Well, here in uh, what Santa Fe is that? Where okay, he's so, at now, so he, he, if he could make it, you could pull in a, fi we, uh, a fiddle player. Oh yeah, we we, could, we could make we could make is, it. Is he still around? Yeah, doing Med, I guess thing? Medford's around. I don't know. Is he? he I think so. Yeah, he uh, he broke. He was of, last time I heard. He, he put a pretty good dent in one of my guitars. I was uh, we were jamming, and uh, I'm sure there's a good. For story those of you who that. don't know, he was uh, he was the the uh, mandolin player on. Uh, the greatest hits album of Pure Prairie League. That's right. That's uh, right. And uh, he had some interesting stories. He's got a lot of stories. Yeah. yeah and uh, some of them are even true. Yeah. He told me he plays blues fiddle. That blues. Mm. He doesn't play fiddle. He plays blues, blues fiddle. fiddle. Um, and so I think you could. It wouldn't be hard for you to to whip the band into shape and mm. and do something like that. I, yeah, we know, probably could. It could even be some kind of a special edition pine knot. Uh, well, you know, we brought this this rise and run album together this year and I don't think I don't think it's going to be another 20 years before we do another one right. I'll put it that way yeah. so. well uh, or you could come down here and play at the Liberty Bell yeah we could do that um, just I right think, down the street here, yeah so. yeah that would be that would be really cool mm -hmm. uh, and you could even play some of your your uh, two take Tim Bryant songs mm -hmm. maybe we could do a prop piano yeah you could do that yeah you get up and sing with me that would be cool I would I would probably do it if I was around, which I probably, I would like to be. Um, your t-shirts are really unique, starting off at the Runaway Thanks. Mule. Yep. Uh, Buenos Noches, Nacogdoches. Yep. Uh, there's one with uh, John Wayne. And yep. There was yep. a movie, he said, you ever been to Nacogdoches? And that's on the t-shirt. Right. Uh, yep. Nac Rat. Nac Rat. So. Nacogdoches was an Indian. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, actually, you could change it. Nacogdoches was a Native American. Well, or Nac Nacogdoches was a cattle chief. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> you, 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 that might be the you next could, shirt. You could, you could put P.S. I'll put that on the back. And, and do yeah. his whole history yeah. uh, that people think they know about him. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you, have, you have some other ones. 
There's a reason. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Yeah, that, that's a, that one. Yeah, I like, right. that. I yeah. like that. We got a lot of them. We got a new 300 shirt that celebrates the tricentennial right. of Nacogdoches. You guys this check year. this out in ETX Rocks World. Nacogdoches, the town, is 300 years old. Yep. Um, that's old. That's, that's old. That's 17, 1716. Wow. That's older than America. Yeah. You realize that? Yeah, that's old. That's old. Uh, so you have, you've heard of Six Flags over Texas, because uh, Six Flags, Texas has been ruled by six different right. sovereign uh, right. entities. Uh, Nacogdoches has been under nine. Yep. Um, so it's an interesting place down here. So, hey. And we're right in the middle of the most historic part of the town. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. if you, could you imagine if you dug up the bricks out on this street, what you would have underneath you, you, it? I think about this. It's almost a hundred percent guarantee that Clyde and maybe Bonnie by his side drove right down these streets. Oh, right. I mean, you know, he had to have. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, well, who, who knows who all has driven down these streets? George Foreman did. I know that. Sam Houston. I saw George Foreman. Sam Houston. Davy Crockett. Man, what kind of company is that? Sam Houston, Davy Crockett, Bonnie Clyde, and yeah. George Foreman. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's no telling. Um, yeah. Really? I mean, that's just... Uh, and Nathan Honeycutt. Yeah, I've been down here a few times. A few. Yeah. But, yeah, Nacogdoches is a great place. And if you're coming to Nacogdoches, the boss light at... 123 East, East Main. Main. One, two, as easy as 123. Yep. Just remember that. I think Can't forget it. That could be your next shirt. Could be. And then, you know, you have Joe, uh, Joe Lansdale here. He lives in yeah. Nacogdoches. Joe, Joe's a good friend of mine, so we got a lot of Joe stuff in here. A lot of it's signed, uh, limited edition, special edition books. Uh, if you're looking for something from Joe. Real quick. Uh, yep. Bef oh. Before we go, uh, uh, you've got, name a couple of these albums that you that really jump out at you. It's the, all classic the vinyl, stuff. I mean, we got right Jethro right. Tull and, and uh, Prince and... Uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Elvis, Charlie Rolling Brown. Stones, Charlie Brown, <laughs> Elvis Costello. We got uh, Rod Stewart, Stevie Ray Vaughan, if you've heard of him. Uh, a little bit of everything. And we can special order. If you want something we don't have it on our shelves, you tell us and we can get it. And that goes for the books, too. Yeah, we also have the DVD of Rainbow's Inn, the movie that was filmed with a lot of characters here in Nacogdoches. Uh, if you're from around here, you probably know some of the guys in that movie. Uh, Country so Willie. Great. Country Willie, yeah. Country Willie Edwards. Yep. He's, yep. A, he's a local legend. Yep. Uh, you know, period. Yep. Uh, you can see him play down at the Liberty Bell. Macklemore's, you can see him play at the Pine Knot. The first time Austin, he ever played in Nacogdoches Marfa. was at my place. Do you know that? Oh, uh, I didn't know yep. that. Yep, It's a true, true story. First time I saw him play was in San and. Uh, San Augustine, yeah, downtown, yeah, and they rented some building down there, and it was uh, it was there weren't a lot of people there, but it was really cool, and he just the crowd just was like 100% into him, and the person sitting next to me said, "Is he famous?" I said, "He is tonight." <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way he he came in our store just like three or four days ago. Yeah, he said, came walking in like. Hello. Uh, you never know. Now, do you have his albums down here? Not yet, but he's bringing them. Yeah. Next time, he okay. said. I told him. He sells out quicker just, than anybody. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's hard. To, it's hard to get him in here, and once they get in, they're in here, they don't stay. Have home, you seen so. the T-shirt he has with uh, it's it's white and yeah. it has his picture drawn on it? Yes, I did that. Did you really? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, it was. Uh, we took. We had a picture taken down here at the Blueberry Festival. Okay. The, uh, and. Uh, I don't know why, but I just felt like doing it, and I did that, and I just handed it to him. And, and next time I see him, they have it's on the shirt. shirt. And I said, "Hey, more power to you, man. That's really cool." Um, so that's cool. Tim yeah, Bryant, we love we're down here at the Boss Light. Yep. And uh, downtown Nacogdoches, yes. one, two, three East Main. And it's, Come uh, see us. It's been great talking to you. Always good to talk to you, Nate. Hey, you guys, always remember support local music, and ETX, ETX rocks. Hello, my name is Timothy Thomas, owner of East Texas Foundation Repair, located right here in Longview, Texas. If you think you're having foundation problems with your concrete slab or pier and beam home, if you're seeing cracked brick, slanted floors, cracks in your sheetrock, doors not latching or sticking or not closing properly, you may have a problem. Please contact us at 903-918-918. 
3409. You can also look us up online at EastTexasFoundationRepair.com. We also offer drainage and waterproofing also. Again, Timothy Thomas, EastTexasFoundationRepair.com. Thank you, East Texas, for your ongoing business. This is Katie Kennedy, the owner of the Liberty Bell, located in historic downtown Nacogdoches. We would like to invite you to come on down for our live music, our extensive menu, including our brunch menu, available on the weekends, and excellent service. We're open every day of the week except for Monday. We've got live music every day and drink specials. So we'd love to see you in Nacogdoches. Come on down. Tell them Katie sent you. We are ETX Ross! <laughs>